Welcome back. It's still the breakfast and plus TV Africa and time to look at what the papers have uh, for us. Uh, quite interesting stories on the front page of the National Dailies. But before we dive into them, uh, good morning to you, Chris Kane Wando. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, Kofi. Nice seeing you. All right. Fantastic. Uh, always great to have you join us every uh, Tuesday morning. Um, Chris Kane Wando is, I guess, as I said today, and he's, of course, um, uh, a chartered mediator and conciliator, and also the executive director of the African Governance and Leadership Initiative. Let's start with the first paper on our table. The nation has some interesting uh, uh, stories, but always going with uh, 2023 for obvious reasons. Let's not go into that. Uh, the big one there, why Nigerians should vote Tinubu Shetima by Buhari. Why Nigerians should vote Tinubu Shetima uh, by Buhari. No surprises. More from the paper. Kidnappers demand 620 million naira for 31 victims of the Edotrian attack. Made in Nigeria helicopter for inauguration before May 29. Silver seeks CBN special fund for modular refineries. Airtel announces acquisition of 5G spectrum. Interesting. Leaders condemn attack on Brazilian government offices. 7,000 nurses begin strike in New York City. Maybe they are following their colleagues in London or the UK, rather, um, to sit at home. Polls threaten, Dianek warns, uh, Yakubu hints of elections shift in volatile areas. ex lagos Borno governors uh, trustworthy. I think that's a writer to the first headline. Uh, withdrawal policy pushes up POS transaction charges as some of the headlines on the front page of the nation. Let's quickly go to the punch. Uh, the punch has the following headlines. Cash limits, customers protest as banks begin enforcement. Uh, customers say policy will affect cash-based businesses, uh, demand fresh review. Bank ATM suspends old notes despite CBN's directive, the new notes scarcity persists. Uh, more from the punch. Scarcity, FG orders NNPC to reduce uh, petrol price. Uh, government acquires stakes in Dangote Refinery, three others. Government demands 620 million naira uh, ransom for the abducted train passengers. Another paper taking a look at that. Uh, Doc Bessie, UK police deep in probe. Controversy surrounds airport A incident. Um, Yoruba nation protesters converge 3 a.m. or converged 3 a.m. Members killed. We see uh, pictures of sort of the chaos there at uh, Ojota near the Ghani Fawimi Park. Protesting, protesting Pali students, blocky battle roads, government intervenes. Um, uh, DSS director's wife orders Kano governorship candidates arrest. Uh, some of the stories on the front page of, of the punch. Interesting one. Very powerful woman. More. Uh, this time we go to the Tribune, the Nigerian Tribune, uh, which has been in circulation since 1949. They say the big one there. Uh, security threat to next election real, INEC, uh, says commission leaving nothing to chance. Fuel importation to end by 2024, FG. Kind of reminds me of some of those uh, 80s and 70s newspaper headlines that we sometimes see from time to time. Uh, the right up to that, 60,000 barrels per day, Port Hacker Refinery to commence Q1. FG claims 80% equity in modular uh, refineries. I can see a picture of uh, the man we call Mephi, uh, the CBN governor, Gordon Mephi. New Nara notes now in ATM as cash withdrawal limit takes off. Uh, right. <laughs> More from the Tribune 13.1 billion Nara bid for fortified equity property fails as EFCC opens sale of assets uh, in Abuja. Why we queried Ibira, traditional ruler, Kogi government? Uh, one killed as Yoruba nation agitators, police clash in Lagos. A government kidnap customary court president in Edo. Six trained victims rescued. Abductors of passengers demand 620 million naira. <laughs> oh my god. But this day has the following headlines. The big one there Buhari in Yola canvases support for Tinubu Binani. Other APC candidates tells the Damawa people Tinubu Shatima can be trusted to deliver, urges them to make history by electing first female governor PDP, Mark's ex-Lagos governor. It's an interesting headline 
uh, from this day, if you know what I mean. Uh, if you know, you know, like they say. More from this day, FG. Port Hackett Refinery to commence a partial operation before end of first quarter. Uh, silver, why? I will happily buy fuel for 300 naira, says kerosene price deregulated beyond government purview. Hmm. Alleged missing 89 trillion naira, CSOs apologize to a Mayfield over call for his visa uh, ban. Six more abducted adult train passengers rescued. Uh, some of the headlines on the front page of uh, uh, this day. Let's quickly um, you know, introduce at this point Chris Kane. Chris, um, before we came on air, I was just having a discussion with you of the, about the uh, development in Ojota Axis of Lagos State with that Yoruba Nation agitation. Um, what are your thoughts on that? Because uh, we just talked about it in a training segment. Some reports say eyewitnesses are saying two people died. We have two different scenarios. One scenario is that the police came and then clashed with the people, the, the protesters, who were being peaceful before they came and one or two people died. Another scenario is that uh, the Odua People's Congress supporters or members clashed with the Yoruba Nation agitators before the police came. You know, so, so what are your thoughts on this? The incident that happened in Nigeria was uh, a very unfortunate one. I wish it, wish it shouldn't have happened. And um, if our security agencies have done um, true due diligence and ability to be able to do some of this. But um, protests, uh, lawful protests, a peaceful protest, is a fundamental human right that we will find in the Nigerian constitution of the international um, constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So, I mean, uh, so every Nigerian has a right to protest and they cannot be stopped from protesting. It can only be legal when that protest uh, turn violent as it did yesterday, and I felt that um, a better communication and the ability to be able to handle the situation without stopping from escalating a situation. Uh, funny enough, I was around that uh, that area yesterday. What I saw was good enough. Some life was lost. Uh, the, uh, the agitator said that two were killed. The police said one uh, uh, was killed, and it was a uh, confrontation with the police and um, this as I said could have been properly handled. Um, OPC have not come back to say that. I, I think I saw a press statement from the APC saying that they were not uh, involved, that it was just uh, the police and the agitators uh, uh, clashed. So but um, it shouldn't have happened. Uh, this uh, would have been prevented and the loss of life and the destruction of uh, properties uh, that have been avoided that is this this similar incident happened in july on july 3 2021 at the same place uh a sales girl uh, by the name jim okay was 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 killed you know when police attempted to to disperse the yoruba nation agitators um the a, a report a coroner's inquest indicted the the police uh, in her death, but till date, what we hear is that nobody was released by the police for prosecution. Um, what are your thoughts, first of all, on the on the the, the manner in which the police approaches uh, protests in the country, and also when when people die, they seem not to be interested in releasing their men or women for for prosecution. Yeah, uh, Kofi. Um, interestingly, I also covered that particular. Incident that protest last year in Nigeria. Um, the girl that in question was killed by a stray bullet. She was um, at the police station MRS around the Jota bus stop when the the, uh, the stray bullet pierced her and she died. And um, the last I read about that story was that um, um, a compensation was um, to be given to the family of the the killer. I don't know that. Whether that was given or not, whether they received it or not. But as I said, we can have much more better way of handling situations like this. Um, going into violence, if the security agencies were able to do what they ought to have done, probably. Because, um, because we have to know that, as I, I, I said earlier on, that every individual in Nigeria has a right to protest. If these yeah, young people are just going out just to protest the way they and march uh, accordingly, and do notice was given that they're going to do that. 
then it is the, the duty of the police to protect them and make sure that that protest uh, march uh, it, 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 the word protest it, it, it collects some kind of um, uh, I don't know how to put it but it, 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 it's supposed to be a march and it, the police are supposed to um, meet them to and make sure that they have a smooth passage um, do whatever they want to do and disperse, make sure that they disperse but when they now start moving, the problem with this issue of march and protest is that they, uh, the, the, those behind it may have the best of intention, but they find it difficult to be able to manage the crisis as it were. Because in the course of that protest, other undesirable elements who have other reasons or have uh, ulterior motives try to use the, uh, uh, that to be able to uh, hijack the protest, get involved in uh, extortion, the discussion of properties and and that is why most of them are not I, i'm always against this issue of protesting and protesting especially in a volatile place like lagos but use of force is not supposed to be in other clients what the police use is what is called um, um rubber bullets rubber bullets don't have the fatality it doesn't kill it can only injure but how are you see our policemen releasing ak-47 and using rifle to shoot at protesters and that is what caused what happens. And that I repeat, it is avoidable. Uh, I'm tired of asking this question, Chris, but what do we need to do as a nation to, to make sure that no police officer just takes the life of any citizen needlessly? I mean, we're still recovering from the killing of the Lagos lawyer uh, in Lekki. We're still recovering from that, like you said. Compensation has been paid to the family of Jim McKay was killed last uh, two years ago, almost two years ago in Ojota, at, in the same scenario. But no one has been prosecuted as we speak for that killing. Um, so, so what needs to be done? I'm tired of asking this question, but we need to ask these questions. What needs to be done to ensure that no police officer just carries a gun and say we're going to kill someone? Just shoot. Until we so start doing the nature, making sure that all those involved, especially uh, uh, security officers, are brought to book and make sure to face the book. They will continue to behave the way and in this manner they do. Once a police officer wears that black and black, or blue and black as it were, or blue and blue, whichever one it is, they feel that they are both the law and they can just handle and keep people. We are talking about the Aja incident of the, uh, of the female. Uh, well, I don't forget that a week or two before. Another uh, young man was also killed by that uh, a policeman from that uh, that um, police station. We've had that investigation on about the killing of the female lawyer, and that um, the policeman has been suspended. When will the prosecution start? When will it be brought to court? What investigation? How many days is it going to take to um, have the investigation? Um, Kofi, and that is where I, most of all that not. I feel that way at um, journalists and uh, the media has a lot to do. We have to continue to question and be able to bring this, um, uh, these atrocities to the fore. Instead of, after reporting, is making a report of it, we do what we do, is we go to beg and forget. There are so many instances where police have brutally murdered Nigerians. I just see on the hot lines of um, most um, media, actually, television, uh, radio, newspapers. After one week, two weeks, we go to beg and forget it. And nothing said about that. There's no, we don't really investigate and make sure that we make sure that that story is seen to the latter and making sure that the country will continue to do that, then the police will continue to take the law into their hands. I feel that having guns is a license to kill. And what happens in other crimes is that when policemen engage in search, as we've seen in the United States and the rest of them, they are quickly um, arrested, arraigned, and prosecuted, and where necessary, jail. That is, that will answer as a deterrent. But here, it's it, it, it just a safe it just uh, seems to me that um, they are just above the law and um, they just continue to do what they do. And that also brings the question the recruit, our recruitment system of our policemen. What kind of recruitment are we having? What kind of people are we recruiting to the police? What kind of training are we doing? On? What kind of psychological um, um, examination? What kind of psychological training do we give them? So that they know that they are first and foremost Nigerians. And they also have families, and, and they are, apart from the uniform they are wearing, they are just like every other Nigeria. So uh, that is the issue. Until we, our recruitment system changes, 
And people start seeing police as a, being a policeman as a last resort, not because they wanted to. Most of them in the police force didn't want to join the police because they don't have another thing, any other thing doing that they can't find job. That is why you don't see most of them. Majority of, the, of them, if they have other job, they will go into the police. And you see the level of frustration that goes into their work. And that is why they, some of them behave. That does not remove the fact that we have very, very fine gentlemen in the police. I have so many of them that are senior officers. And it does not behave the way some of these uh, lower ranks uh, men behave. Right. Uh, uh, it chances are that if, you know, uh, it's confirmed that two people died as opposed to one, two more families will be grieving. And uh, they won't want to hear that they are fine officers in the police <laughs> force. They, they, they will just want to, you know, tell you that they, they, they they've lost their loved one. It's, it's really sad one, Chris. But, um, unfortunate. Uh, yes, unfortunately. Let, let's go over to Edo State. Um, we're still trying to recover from some of the attacks by terrorists in different parts of the country, especially on critical infrastructure, uh, the rail network in the country. This time in Edo State, yesterday we discussed this, I asked our guests why Edo State. Um, have we seen the, the northern terror or the terror experience in the northern part of the country come down south, or is this something uh, that we should see as the previous aid security and kidnapping in the southern part of the country, of which Edo State has been a, 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 a beneficiary, we want to call that. But we're hearing that six more train kidnap victims have been rescued and that the abductors have set a benchmark. They've given a number, a figure, 620 million naira. What, what are your thoughts on this? First of all, most, um, the issue of rescue, I'm only very skeptical when I read that story, the way we use it at the media, six rescue. That was on the media yesterday where I uh, posted that two children were rescued. The two children that um, they were talking about were not rescued. These are the children that were abandoned by their parents when they were abducted at the, at the, tra uh, at the train station. So saying that they were rescued is not... Uh, <laughs> It's not the right choice of word. And when you say rescue, when were they rescued? How were they rescued? Uh, does it mean that they are not part of the remaining? Probably, I just my personal impression is most of the, some of them probably escaped because of the large volume of number of uh, people that were uh, picked up and uh, by these um, bandits and terrorists, and uh, they were able to find their way and uh, escape. But if they say they are rescued, well, who am I to uh, challenge the authorities? Uh, issuing that statement. But the issue is, is that we won't be big challenge on our hands. It's like likely striking twice on the spot. This happened last year um, along the Abuja um, Kaduna um, route. The difference is that you know, why that train was derailed and the uh, people were adopted. These particular ones were passengers that were adopted at the, um, at the train stations waiting to board the, the, the train. And uh, the question should be asking what our security agencies are doing. Kofi, are you aware that we have a commission of police appointed to be in charge of railway? There's a female commission of police specifically appointed by the IGP to be the commission of police in charge of railway. That is a preview. The question now ask yourself, what has she been doing? What level of security has she given all the, the train stations in Nigeria, as far as I'm concerned, it's most likely that we have practically next to nothing in terms of security at that uh, police station, um, that um, train station. That is one. Then, secondly, is the fact that the, we have most of this, um, uh, I've only said that with that number, that we, our in, in terms of resources, we have limited number of police. And that is why some of us have been advocating for this community and state police. Some of these critical infrastructures don't need to be secured by police. They can be secured through community and state policing, those that um, are recruited by the state. But um, some people are keep playing kid club with uh, some of this uh, agitation by some of us that it is high time that we look at the critical area of uh, state and community policing. If we have that, then we can be able to decentralize the security system and be able to make sure that um, some of um, these areas are manned by uh, local vigilantes, manned by uh, community policy. I'll tell you, uh, Kofi, you ask a why, why a do, why not a do? If you see, for example, what is happening in the Southwest, Southwest seems to be getting it a bit right, a, a little more better than other parts of the country with their Moteco uh, uh, policing. That in itself has solved so many problems 
in terms of community policing. If other regions can queue into that, we have similar thing in this southeast, but that of the southeast is quite different, cannot be used as a good example of what communities and state policy is about. What the governors are doing in the South, especially the governor of Kipon State, is using a bubago to intimidate and arrest uh, would be opponents. That is not what the security actors are supposed to be. It's supposed to be community policy that will assist the police in making sure that most of these areas are secure. But um, I hope that this will not have this happening again. Now they are demanding 620 million, 20 million naira on every kidnap um, uh, person. How are we going to do that? How are they going to pay? And um, you will saw what happened with the Kaduna Abuja uh, uh, um, uh, passengers and the horror and the traumatic uh, horror that uh, most of them went through until they are finally released. It's a qu quite quite a, a traumatic experience, uh, like you've rightly said, very very worrying. Let, let's go um, back to the uh, the punch, and this time the paper has given priority uh, with its lead front page headline to uh, the cash withdrawal policy. Um, the bank, uh, the paper is saying that the customers are uh, are, are still protesting um, at the banks as they begin enforcement, uh, saying that the policy will affect cash-based businesses. I mean, indeed, the CBN came up with a U-turn, um, or not a U-turn, but some uh, improved, an improved offer, let's call it that, increasing the daily uh, uh, and weekly withdrawal limits for individuals and organizations. So what are your thoughts on what the CB or the punch is saying, uh, that uh, as banks are uh, on, on rolling, or rolling out this policy, customers are still protesting at the banks. However, uh, another paper, I think this time is the uh, Nigerian Tribune, uh, had a little, uh, you know, headline front page. It says, uh, New Nara Notes now an ATM. I don't know if you've seen the New Nara Notes in the ATM. I certainly haven't seen anyone till, till as of yesterday. I didn't see anything. Uh, so what are your thoughts on, on what the punch is saying with the protests coming from, from consumers or customers? Yes, let me start with the last question on the New Nara Notes on the uh, on ATM machine, um, Kofi, uh, a particular bank two days ago um, issued a statement that um, they will start dispensing only new Naira note on their ATM, and um, from yesterday, and uh, we were part of those that uh, online platform that used that new site, and I went out yesterday to investigate myself, and then um, Kofi, good and behold, and uh, I went to one of the branches of the bank at um, at um, Adeni Jones in Ikeja. And um, I slot in my card, and um, what do I, I got? I got um, a twenty thousand naira cash, new naira notes, all new naira notes. Yes, yes, from that ATM. So that means that um, they started some of them. I don't want to mention the uh, bank. I don't want to give them pay about of before they okay. start charging me. Did, did, you, get, <laughs> so, did, you, yes. did you get? Um, uh, what denomination were, were you given? One thousand naira. One thousand. One thousand naira. But but the, yeah. the policy says that. <laughs> Remember, the policy said two hundred naira. Yeah, which but it was just one. I've not, I've not said. I've seen the one thousand notes. I've seen the five hundred notes. I've never seen what the two hundred notes looks like, and uh, that is the issue. So then the, with the withdrawal policy, and also the federal, um, the central bank came out with um, a statement at the weekend that um, cross uh, um, uh, withdrawal of cash across the counter of new notes will stop. And they've given a directive to uh, back that anybody that wants with us should go to the ATM. Um, and um, I was just asking myself, how would it, if I want to withdraw three hundred thousand naira from the from my account to me, I should go and stand at the ATM and be slotting my card. I know that the way they, they structure those that uh, this bank are so uh, I don't know they are so profit making that they they, they they put your limit at ten thousand naira. That means I'm going to slot in that uh, for thirty times before I can withdraw. 300,000 naira. Mm -hmm. And after two seconds or uh, the second um, withdrawal, you know that you start, you, they start charging you. So this, this policy is not totally well thought out. And I believe that the central bank has to do something about it. This new naira note is not circulated. If you cannot get it in Lagos, then what you cannot imagine what will happen in villages in my state of Imo State and other remote villages in Nigeria. They, and then they, we have just today is 10th, right? We have to do one more days to the end of. Uh, withdrawal of the old Naira note and the commencement of um, uh, the, the use of that um, the, the, the old Naira note laughing from being used. So, 
what is going to happen? And I wrote somebody read a fundamental question with me yesterday. I was asking the CK for those of us that are in this diaspora, we have Nara notes. You know, when we travel to Nigeria and come to Nigeria, we never ask some of this Nara notes so that we can use for them for airport and the rest of their movement, airport movement and most of these Naira notes are still with us in um, abroad. How do we be able to exchange that? I don't think that Central Bank has even factored that in because if you look at that, I'm sure that we have billions of Naira uh, notes uh, with um, some Nigerians in the diaspora. So, but this issue is not totally thought out well. They've increased the limit um, to 500,000 for a uh, single account, a personal account, and 5 million Naira for um, corporate accounts. But what I say in essence that you might still withdraw that, but if you are going to withdraw more than that, you are going to charge you for that. But for me, the central bank doesn't seem to have gotten it right because most of the ATM yesterday, I was at the airport yesterday, they are just dispensing ordinary notes. Uh, 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 Chris Kilaro, sorry, I'm trying to do some investigative journalism here. Uh, you said you went to an uh, ATM, automated teller machine, yesterday, yeah. and um, you were able to withdraw um, new Naira notes yeah. yesterday, January 9, 2023. Yes. And you took yes. out denominations of 1,000 Naira. 1,000 Naira is what you got. 1,000 Naira notes. 1,000 Naira. Okay. Yeah. 1,000 Naira. Not 200. That's number one. No, not 200. How about... I'm looking for people to not 200. Not 500. It was 1,000 Naira. Okay. That... And CBSA was going to be 200 Naira. It was just 1,000 Naira. Yeah. Now, how, how much did you withdraw in, in total? 20,000. Okay. And I was there both before me also. I know why I gave you. I know, don't do everything that I'm going to give you some. I know, Kofi, I know where you are. No, no, I thought, I, thought you said, I thought you said, I thought I heard you say 30,000. Uh, 2,000. No, I thought I heard you say 30,000. No, I didn't say 30,000. It's 20. So if you expect 10,000, I don't expect me to get, give you 10,000. It's 20,000. I thought I heard you say 20,000 because <laughs> um, it, it would have been um, uh, 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 very funny if you were able to draw more than 20. Maybe next time try and withdraw 20,500 to see if you get it. Because they're telling us we can't draw more than <laughs> more than 20,000 in a day, which is hilarious. Anyway. Um, which, is next? What, 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 which is also what I'm saying. Because the, the central bank gave a directive to set, um, to the, the commercial banks last week, it, that uh, information came out on Friday, that they should not issue any um, new cash to anybody across the counter. That people should go to the ATM. So what I'm not saying is that if I want to withdraw 300,000 for whatever reason or 200,000 for whatever reason, it means I should go to the ATM to withdraw 200,000, which is not possible. Because by the policy, you have already said about, you put a cap to there about 20,000 there apart. I can't remember now. So you can see this... Uh, the CBN guidelines from assault the guidelines I, I don't even know what happened. Well, where is the question, Kofi? The question we should be asking ourselves where is the government of Central Bank? Nobody's have seen in public for over four months now. The last we had of him that was it was abroad, that it was not feeling fine. We just said, uh, 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 you don't get this. Uh, uh, yeah, you did, boy. Now I can see you. Like, you are going to change up. Uh, I'll come and see you. I'll see you after this program. It's so, it's so, it's as if I've won the lottery. <laughs> um, uh, uh, head of, uh, uh, you know, uh, production unit here, Noja, is give me yeah. five, 500 naira. You know, it's the first time. Yeah, it's the first time I'm seeing it with my Koro Koro eyes, um, Chris Kenner. I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, is, yeah. It looks strange. That's, that's, that. Yeah, it's, it, 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 it's, I think that, I think that it, uh, what I should suggest is that the central bank should just push this back a bit. Don't forget the National Assembly. Um, I've asked the, 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 the Senate and House of Health, I've asked the central bank to review some of these policies. And I think more than should Kofi, you remember the day that sometime in December, the United Kingdom uh, is coming out with new um, pound, pounds notes. And um, because, you know, after the death of the Queen, then well, they have to have the head of the king in the new, in the new pound standing notes. And, Kofi, do you know when they are going to, when this, when they are going to withdraw uh, this one totally and they start this new one? I think it's 2014 or 2016. That's about three years, two years, or thereabouts. About three years, I think 2015 or 2016, about three years. What will all that country have been for four years? Our central bank wants to do within one month. Is it possible? <laughs> That's an interesting question. Chris, yesterday we were trying to do an experiment, um, which is uh, what i like to carry out uh, today. You see, you were saying that this Naira note is uh, it's, it's washing off. 
Um, we'll, we'll, have yeah. a, we'll have a discussion on this with an expert later, but you are expert for now. Um, it's, the green is showing off on, on you can, I don't know if you can see, but it's, it's, yeah. uh, uh, it's, it's green. It's washing off on the white. You know, but they say, they're saying it's um, it's normal. So let's 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 give them the benefit of the doubt. But if you you oh no, just sorry, I'm I'm doing this your naira on TV. I hope CBN will not arrest me. Um, but you can see it's washing off. Uh, it's it's rubbing yeah. off. You know, you can see the green the center, there. The center, the center back, um, in the press release on on Saturday or Friday, did mention about that and said that maybe this is why that happens. He said, uh, yes, uh, it is um. If they have sort of white or white, there's a possibility that it will be stained, that is normal. And that what, they, this, what happens is that this first paint happens like that, but we subsequent uh, painting, that it will be solidified, they have more interest. All sorts of excuses. I don't if you, not to spoil our mind this morning, I bet we'll talk on that. Hey, you're not, you're, you, seem, you seem not to be happy. It's all right. We will move on from this. We'll have a discussion on this later. But I, I just um, want to ask you one other question. It's a trick question, but not a trick question. It's a, it's a funny question. If if the CBN is saying, from what we heard over the weekend, that, oh, we thought about it, oh, we forgot to add in a in policy, you know, uh, um, secular, that uh, the banks should not give Nigerians these new notes over the counter. Don't give them, and we we just add it to the sec to, to to the list of um, the policy uh, statements, and they are saying that the bank should give only two hundred naira from the ATMs. So what is going to happen to the five hundred naira and one thousand? How are we going to get it? Are we going to? Is there a tree? Is there a tree somewhere to go pluck? Because I don't know. The only way you can get your hands on the note is from the bank or from the ATM. If you go to the POS, the only way the POS operator can get the Naira is from the bank. And if they're saying, bank, so, oh, don't give Nigerians new notes, so give them the old ones. And we have to withdraw only 200 Naira from the ATM. Where are we going to get the 500 or 1,000 Naira from? I don't know. Am I missing something here, sir? Please help me out. Yes. You know, uh, you know that uh, song, if you ask me now who I go ask, that's on my um, I, I forgot to name of that lady that sang that song. Uh, if you ask me now, who I go ask? So that is the that is the issue. And um, I, I've been saying it is that the central bank through the governor of the central bank um, is just speaking from both sides of his man. Is a total confusion everywhere in that central bank. And I just personally feel that the right time the central bank governor is, uh, resigns. Since the man there tried to gain politics last year and wanted to be the president of Nigeria, <laughs> he has not all sense of responsibility in terms of monetary policies and how he is going to apply it. Don't forget to say that when that policy came out, the Minister of Finance came out to say that she is not aware, she was not aware about the new policy. And quickly was she was quickly shut down by Asura uh, via a statement that the president uh, and that, that uh, yes, the president is aware the president. We, are, we shouldn't be holding a Mephile responsible for this. We should look at it as a, as a part of the failed policies of President Muhammad Buhari, just like most of the promises in Nigeria since 2015, that none of them have come to pass. Most of them, let me not none of them. So we, we add this one to it. We add it to the issue of uh, um, setting up of refineries, uh, the issue of um, uh, one dollar turn to one naira, the issue of uh, fuel subsidy, the issue of electricity, from uh, 5,000 to 40,000 megawatts, and so many of that the promises that he made to Nigeria. But good enough, uh, we have just been doing less than five months for him to give office. I only pity whoever is going to take over from this government. And I've seen it with that now. Until this government leaves, we will not be able to the colossal damages that this government has done to the Nigerians and our economy and so many other things. Um, but it, it, let us focus on 20. I think our focus now is trying to make sure that we get it right. Um, come next month, the, uh, the election is less than 50 days, the presidential election is less than 50 days from now. Let us start conducting to Nigeria, mobilizing Nigeria to those that have not collected their PVCs, to collect their PVCs, and make sure that they vote right come um, um, February and uh, next month, and also March uh, for right. the other elections. All right. Chris Kennedy, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to...
keep this uh, onoja it's not coming to you all right this is a specimen give onoja an ebu a specimen and ebu to go and change mm. <laughs> specimen <laughs> for investigative uh, uh, purposes all right thank you very much chris kendo one executive director african governance and leadership initiative look forward to having you again thank you very much for having me do have a wonderful day ahead same to you same to you up next we have a discussion uh, on the oil and gas industry it seems that the oil and gas industry companies the major oil companies we have to look for funding from elsewhere as the banks are thinking of funding clean energy as opposed to fossil fuel energy uh, we'll be looking at that when we come back stay with us